Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. Hope you'll just hang around with us for the next few minutes. Uh, you will be very, very glad that you did. So welcome all of you to Home Keepers. We've been on the air almost 20 years. Can you believe that? And what a blessing to come into your homes daily uh, with things to certainly enrich your life in the Lord, but also those things that you have to deal with here on earth. Uh, that's, that's pretty important as well, isn't it? So we're so glad you're here. Y young, old, new, maybe some have been with us for more than a decade. You're all welcome. You're all loved. And uh, we have a very beloved guest. He comes every month. His name is Dr. David Clark. He's a psychologist and he is so based in the Bible. And that's my favorite kind of counselor, psychologist that you could hope to meet or that you might need someday. And if you watch the program regularly, you've seen him on here. We've talked about a myriad of things. And uh, on this program, we're going to talk about something right at the beginning of our conversation that's going on in the world today and being talked about a lot. And that is this kind of Me Too movement of women who have been insulted and assaulted for years and years and kind of a good old boy mentality uh, has uh, worked against them. Dr. Clarks, we're going to talk about that. And we are going to fix you apple crisp pizza. I know you've heard me say this before, but I've got to say it again because I know no other way to say it. It smells wonderful in here. Uh, Brooke is shaking her head. She agrees with me. Uh, smells like a good apple pie, so I don't know anything that smells better than that. But this is a, a pizza and a great, just a great idea for something different. Uh, before I join Stephanie, though, I want to again offer you the book Debt Proof Living by Mary Hunt, who is written a lot of books on money and she's experienced with it because I think she's had some bankruptcies and that kind of thing. And what she's learned, she's giving to you. Now we've always offered this in the past for 18 or $20, but I was going through the closet, you know, and I saw that we had quite a few of these left. So I'm offering them to you for any amount, any amount, any gift you want to give to homekeepers, ask for debt proof living. And I would like to say that book is loaded with graphs, ways to get out of debt early and also uh, savings and investing plans. You can see it's a good sized book. So if you use your credit card, call 1-800-229-0059 or write to us at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Uh, this is a book that young people should read before they get into a lot of debt problems. So I hope you'll take advantage of this. Any amount that you want to give the program, we'll send it to you. Isn't that a good deal, Steph? That is a great mm -hmm. deal. It's a it's an excellent book. Anything you can teach your kids about debt and financial structuring and everything, you are doing them such a big favor because they don't teach that in school. No, they don't. Um, are you teaching your daughter? I'm trying my best. But, you know. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Okay, we got a uh, pie crust. A uh, refrigerator pie crust. I'm just rolling it out a little bit to make it a little bit bigger to fit on here. I have four apples, I have two-thirds cup of sugar, three tablespoons of flour, and cinnamon, a, table, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm going to mix all this together. You have uh, two-thirds or one-third cup brown sugar, let me just do this, half a cup of flour, a third a cup of rolled oats, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, mm -hmm. and a quarter cup of butter that you're going to yes. bring together. So let me get. So I'm going to mix here. this together and then try to... And then incorporate the butter. Right. You did a great job on that. Well, thank you. Great job. <laughs> just Everyone right, needs a little encouragement. Just sometimes. right the side. Okay. Okay. So I'm just taking my sugar, my flour, and my cinnamon and mixing it together. This is so super simple, and it's gonna be, it's gonna taste just like a piece of apple pie that you didn't have to do if all the you, work. If uh, you fix this for company, I think it would be one they would remember. Yes, for sure. And, and this came just, you know, it's from the refrigerated section, so you don't have to make a, a pie crust or, or do all the crazy into the pie pan thing. Just put it on a pizza pan. I think my mother was the generation where everything was from scratch. Yes. In fact, I actually remember when boxed uh, cakes came out. Really? Yes. This is just four apples that we uh, peeled and diced. Mm -hmm. You do see. I don't. I just. I remember all. They're always being. 
Do you want to trade? <laughs> well, go another generation. Brooke Do you want to trade? Uh, yes. Okay. Bro Brooke didn't even know. <laughs> that there used to be that, no, no. That you made a cake without a box. Mm hmm And she's going to be a bride, so I hope we're teaching her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, you're so blessed to be on this show. I don't know. Maybe Matthew will cook. We're... Yes, um, this is just inside information here. Doesn't your father, future father-in-law, doesn't he cook a lot? Oh. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Matthew's mother is a phenomenal okay, cook. Okay, I got, I got it wrong. It's somebody yeah. else. Ma Matthew's mother is an amazing cook. Mm. Okay, so I got all mine with the butter mixed up, mm -hmm. and then you had the apple and the cinnamon and the flour and the sugar. So let me get this. So super simple. So mm -hmm. Okay, so you just take the apples, put it on the pizza crust, or the pie crust on the pizza pan, and spread it out. You know, if you don't want to eat it, it's just worth the aroma. Who wouldn't want to eat it? <laughs> oh, there's probably someone I'm out like, there. I saved calories up today so that I could have some of this and Did not you? feel too terribly bad about it. Do you count calories or just kind of try to keep a running? I just try to keep it running. Running tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this medication that I'm on, this cancer medication, uh -huh. one of the side effects is weight gain. So, and I have gained some weight, so I'm just trying to be conscious mm -hmm. about it. But but I can't let it worry me. I can't let it bother no. me. Okay, and then you just take this topping and put it over the top and you bake it. And then when you get it out, you put some of this. Oh, my. And, uh... A scoop of vanilla ice cream would be nice. Yeah, it makes it 350 for about 40 minutes. So this is just like a, an apple pie topping. Uh-huh. Then we're going to try to take a bite. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Go ahead. You're not, you gotta try it. Oh, and with this, if you serve it with guests, you got a conversation mm -hmm. piece. <laughs> Please, <laughs> please, please. Fresh apples mm. and the ice that cream. That is so, so oh ridiculous. My. We are good. So that's hug so worthy. Mm. So mm. good. Oh my god. Will gosh. you tell them what to look at my mouth for? Yes, you can get this recipe. The, all the information will come up on the oh. screen. Email oh. is easiest, but if you want to mail, the address will come up on the screen. And then Arthlane's going to be talking to David Clark next. Mm. Mm. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Dr. Clark is always welcome on Homekeepers. Thank you for returning again. Well, thanks for having me. Wasn't last time fun? We went through all your books. It was fun. Just, uh, I wonder even if you had ever seen them. Not just, really stacked up like that, because uh -huh. you just kind of move on, but it's We, fun we put them in alphabetical order and yeah. went through them. And uh, a subject today I'd like uh, your enlightening on, um, which is so prevalent, and that's adultery. Yeah. And a lot of your books do um, kind of address it. But I brought things from Dear Abby. Good old Dear Abby. <laughs> yeah. You can always count on Dear Abby. <laughs> yeah, um, here's one. Why will a married man pick up some tramp and treat her like a lady, then he will turn around and treat his wife like a tramp? <laughs> and this is what Abby says. <laughs> what did Abby say? I think you might have a little different, uh, <laughs> it's more spiritual take. I have a feeling. But uh, she makes a point. A man picks up a tramp because he wants a female companion who is no better than he is. In her, compa in her company, he doesn't feel inferior. He rewards, rewards her by treating her like a lady. He treats his wife, who is a lady, like a tramp because he feels that by degrading her, he will bring her down to his level. This makes him feel guilty. So in order to get even with his wife for making him feel guilty, he keeps, her, keeps right on punishing her. Boy, is that a complicated <laughs> response. <laughs> I wonder, 
<laughs> she taught psychobabble, yeah. it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, right. People sin because they want to sin, mm -hmm. and it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And it, in some cases, of course, in many cases, I should say, yeah, this, this guy has been a lousy husband, hasn't met the wife's needs, therefore the marriage isn't very exciting. And so he, he looks outside. Men have been doing that for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just about that simple. And frankly, I don't care why he does it. You're doing it, quit it. Mm -hmm. that, that's where I come from. And the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. Right, that's exactly right, yeah. So a big problem in America today is that people live by their feelings. You hear so much about feelings and right. don't trust them. No, and Satan's gonna, he's a master at this with Christians as well as non-Christians, he'll bring someone into your life, opposite sex, mm -hmm. who is interesting, who has, has n no morality, and, and things start to click. Well, you have to be alert to that. Mm -hmm. Work on your marriage, that's very protective, but you gotta be ready for his assaults. He's awfully good. And Satan knows a lot of times which buttons to push oh, because yeah. of your behavior. I don't think he can really read your mind or anything like that, but. Right, but um, boy, he's good. He seems to, and I've told many people this that are having affairs. I say, look, this is adultery, it's sin, you better quit it, it's gonna destroy your life. They're like deer in the headlights, they don't get it. I say, mm -hmm. he's brought someone, and they describe the person they're with as this wonderful person. I say, really? He's a that, cheater. I say, yeah, it's a skank. I say, I use the word skank. I can't believe. Does this person know you're married? Yeah, skank. Uh -huh. Does this person know you have kids? Skank, uh -huh. end of story. But, but the person seems to meet your needs. Seems to be the perfect match. Oh, hardly, mm -hmm. hardly. You're gonna ruin your whole life. Yeah, here's another one. I think I might've used this before, but this really is telling Dear Abby. Dear Abby, how about a letter from a winner? My married lover left his wife for me. I was told that I wasn't breaking up any, anything. His marriage was dead long before he even met me. His wife had gotten fat. Mm. I was married too, uh, but I assured him that my marriage was also over. My husband had gotten dull and boring. Hmm. So I divorced my boring husband and he divorced his chubby wife. Oh yes, we both had children, but we explained that we were in love and when they were older, they would understand. Isn't this, Classic. you hear this all the time. Crazy thinking, yep. Yeah, our marriage was a dream come true. No more lying and sneaking around. At long last, we were legally man and wife. So they got together. Huh. Brother. Our apartment was filled with modern furniture and old-fashioned guilt and plenty of doubt and mistrust. Ah, good for her, she gets it. Two years later, he was meeting someone new. I told him he was a liar and a cheat. He, he uh, said it took one to know one. And by the way, he's gotten a little dull and boring and I've put on a little weight. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Yeah, well, she finally gets it. See, so but never the damage. Off. Oh, the damage is... Two families destroyed, two marriages destroyed, kids seriously affected. Oh my goodness. That's what I tell these people. I say, look, you, if you make this mistake, it's, it's gonna hurt everybody. And this new marriage has no chance. Mm -hmm. And she nails it on, on the head, no trust. Mm -hmm. How can you trust someone who's cheated? Mm -hmm. You both have cheated. You're never gonna get over that. Mm -hmm. It's outside of God's nature to <clears throat> bless a relationship like that. I've never seen him do it in 30 years. I always believe too that Satan has the power to take you on a high. Oh yeah. And, and people will look at someone like you and someone like me as uh, we're stogy, we don't know, we don't know what's going on. And, all, and so that's a blinding, oh, they're yes. blind. And they get fooled by it. But Satan, those scales are gonna drop. Yep. And they're gonna see the damage they've done. Oh, the reality. I've had clients come back into my office after having, and just like this lady, and men too, who come back in after having you know, divorced their wives and husbands and gotten remarried you know, to the paramour. Oh, disaster, when they're honest. It's just like one session to kind of say, look, you were right, and I'm sorry, what can I do now? Oh, <laughs> it's not pretty, because mm -hmm. they get it now. And the interesting thing is the, the tremendous physical activity that they're going through that Satan uses, that's the first thing that goes maybe six months in, maybe a year at the outside, and then that's over with. So the, the thrill very, is gone. It's gone, yep. And now we got a real problem. Nobody likes us, we've got the blended family, we, we've lost God's favor, you're now in serious trouble. Yep. Address that part, because I've seen this up close and personal, when uh, your friends don't go along with you. You might have some righteous friends, and then you wake up yeah. After the passion's gone in a very short amount of time from what you've said. That long. What do you do? I mean, you, your friends have 
turned away, really. Right. You have nothing in common anymore. You don't. You've, you've got to, it comes back to you've got to repent. Now, it gets a little tricky since now you're remarried. Now, that gets a little dicey. I've had, I've had I say, look, take it, to, take it to the Lord. There are cases when I've had people that, that if you truly repent and you know this relationship is not in God's favor, you'll start making some changes. Maybe the other person will divorce you and, and it'll be all be over with. I've seen mm -hmm. that happen many times. But That's you, interesting. I've had some couples, and this is, this is rare, but both people, they've, they've gotten married under those circumstances and they know it's been, it's been wrong. But before God, they truly repent. They start living for Him. I've even had them do some separation for a while and then God seems to bless that and if you're really on track and they make amends with anybody they can make amends with mm -hmm. and God then will give you a measure of intimacy in that new marriage. But that's rare. It's extremely rare. It's mm -hmm. hard to pull off because people don't typically get help. They just keep living in sin. Yeah, but um, they broke a covenant. I don't think people understand how serious that is. Right. Yeah, in America now it's not that. It's like, a, it's like an appliance that doesn't work anymore. Nobody fixes anything. But man alive, man, I'm only telling couples, your marriage is sacred. I didn't feel that way. I can't stand her. It doesn't make a difference. Your marriage <laughs> is sacred. God won't change his mind. And breaking that is a serious sin. It is. Uh, we, we've talked before, and, and I've really promoted, you can learn a lot out of a book. You can learn a lot if some sit down with someone like Dr. Clark, and we've got his information on the screen. And uh, he holds seminars in churches, and I think... Uh, uh, pastors should consider a, a real expert to come in and have, you have a day or a two day uh, seminar. They're powerful for your church. Um, but also just a one-on-one -on -one with a therapist. It's just like it puts light on something that you've been in the dark. It can make a difference. And I don't waste any time, as you might have noticed. I mean, I'm gonna tell you right, I'm gonna tell you what's wrong, I'm gonna tell you what to do pretty quickly. Our you said a lot of yours are one and two appointments. They are. You know what? If, if money's an issue or, or if, they, if they have the epiphany and repentance happens sooner and they have a plan of attack, well, they, they won't need to see me forever. Mm -hmm. My, when I have a full-blown case, it's five to eight times. That's all it ever is, even with couples. That's what I do. We get right to it. We get the work done. It's not never ending. And what do you think today, Arthelene? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, you know, what to do and how to do it because I should know that's what you're seeing me for. Yeah, and if you don't do it, I can't really help you. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's the door. Yeah, I don't, I don't say to the folks that don't do what I say. <laughs> yeah. Um, how is forgiveness lived out? And am I off base, because I'm just guessing, that it's harder for men to it, forgive? It is. Is it? Very interesting. Yeah. Women are, are incredibly forbearing and patient and kind, and I think in many cases more spiritual and sensitive and so they, it's hard, but it's easier th for men. Men have a real problem because they, and women of course will go through the steps of forgiveness more easily, talking it out, being honest, uh, including God. Men don't want to do that. They want to go, ah, let's just move on. You, you hurt me, uh, big problem, it w and men will own it. It's, it was my fault when it wasn't my fault. And so that disturbs, that's no real forgiveness there. That's intellectual, I choose to forgive you. That's not what God's talking about in the Bible. The fully is actually forgiving you with God's help healing and trusting you again. Do men feel you've really attacked my manhood? Oh yeah. Well, that's a And to heal they have to go there. I'd have to tell you that if you did that to me. I don't want to do that because that makes me feel even less than a man. Now the paradox is you got to do that. You damaged me, and my, insulted That might have had nothing to do with it. Right, exactly. And again, I'm very clear on whoever is the sinner, that's 100% their fault. The other spouse has nothing to do with it. Now, they, they, there's a phase where you have to heal from what's done, and then when you get to the marriage, then both are involved. Mm -hmm. But I'm not responsible for anything you do. You don't respond for anything that I do. That's my responsibility. And that's, that's neat and clean, and it's biblical, and it works. Yes, and I always come back to this, as I've matured some, is God forgave me. Right. <laughs> Everybody needs forgiveness. Yeah, the Bible is clear on that. Oh, it's, it's in very sober terms. Mm -hmm. If you want to be forgiven, uh -huh. I tell you what, you better forgive. So we have to do it. How is it really lived out? I, because isn't forgiveness a process, or do you just say, "Okay, I forgive you"? Let's move well, It is move a process on. of months. Here's some testimonies, and these are well-meaning people that you know, Shazam! I just forgave like that. Yeah. I stopped drinking tonight. <laughs> we well, you know what? That's not really reality. It, it plays well for the crowd, but the fact is it's months of 
comfort and we talk about what happened over and over again. We include God. We have accountability. We make some key changes in the relationship. All these things are necessary to rebuild trust. And forgiveness, you know, it does take time. Now, it's hard won, and God does it, but you have to work at it. I've seen some real success stories in the ministry. Me I too. really have. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Mm -hmm. God restores. I'm always telling couples, Satan wants you to believe. Now, first he entices you to sin, then you sin, then he says you're done. You mm -hmm. are a fake, you're yeah, a phony. Yeah, you're out of here. Right. Uh, God wants to restore. Mm -hmm. And that is a beautiful thing, and he can do it. Now, we've got something else going on. And that is the way a man and a woman will live together at the drop of a hat. Yeah, man. And they've got kids. Yeah. They don't care. How dare you? Look what they're teaching these children, and I'll just put it in common vernacular. You're teaching your children it's okay to shack up. You certainly are. There are no standards. Don't bother getting married. And the numbers in the Christian community are just about the yes. same now. As the not, I, I expect it for the world. Well, what do they know? Mm -hmm. We know better. Mm -hmm. But many pastors and their well-meaning people, they don't, oh, they're just tiptoeing around. It needs to be thundered yeah, from the platform. Yeah. It's wrong. Now, not in some mean way, but don't do it. Here's why you don't do mm -hmm. it, but you never hear about it. And if they leave your church. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. You've told the truth. Yeah. Now, have you... And if I was going to do it, and I do this in some churches when I have a, when I have a seminar, you, you talk about it. It's in loving terms, but it's a firm term. It's not working. Here's why it doesn't work. And here's how to get out. Mm -hmm. Here's how to make a separation, yeah. live apart, uh, repent, heal, and then you can even come back together. God will bless that, but He won't bless you if you keep on doing mm -hmm. it. But yeah, it's just disgraceful now. And, and I've, I, I've tried to address this in some of my books, and the publishers are very uneasy with it because they think it's going to be a turnoff. I'm thinking, what are you so kidding what? me? It's the truth. <laughs> I'll handle it tastefully, but the truth is the truth. God <laughs> says it's wrong. He hasn't changed his mind. Yeah, I know the pastor of a very large church here, and they kept noticing these names were different. Last names were different, but the address was the same. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, and so they would address it, and they did exactly what you live apart for a while. Right. Yeah. God will honor that, and people will rally around you because the world's own statistics bear out that it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Folks that live together either never get married, it's just endless engagement or endless living together, or they do get married and their marriages fail at a higher, a higher rate than those that don't live together. So it doesn't work. The thing that bothers me is you're telling your children it's okay. Right. The, the, the ones I know, there are children in the home. Oh yeah, the modeling. Mm -hmm. We can have one, two, three kids. We're not even married. Mm -hmm. Where's the commitment? I can walk out at mm -hmm. any time. And sometimes the children... Uh, their biological mom or dad are not right. in the home. So uh, just set it up for total uh, confusion. Yeah, God's plan is always the best plan. One man, one woman for life. We have safety, we have protection, we have security. And the world doesn't know anything about that. We, we just have a couple minutes, but uh, I know that you do premarital counseling, which, uh, boy... I try to break couples up when I do premarital counseling. <laughs> well, that's probably a good thing, better now than later. I'm hard on them, yeah. Uh -huh. But <clears throat> be a good way, a uh, good money spent by some so. parents. Say, okay, we want you to go talk to the Dr. Clark. But I'm wondering how many of that age of marriage, you know, early, early 20s, or there somewhere it's kind of normal, um, have they ever heard the word covenant? And if they have, do they know what it means? You're right. That, is, that word has passed out of our vernacular and, and even in Christian circles, mm -hmm. not even talked about. And so they go in thinking, well, like, gosh, I hope this works. And, and maybe we'll be lucky when the yeah. fact is it's permanent. Don't go into it unless you have any idea, no idea of getting out and then hang in there and it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. I told the premarital couples, this is going to be the hardest thing you have ever done. And they're like, you know, we're in love and all that. <laughs> I say, that's great. That's not, you know, that, to keep that, you're going to have to work really hard. Do you pound into them that this is forever, this is till death? I do. And, and, and I will literally, I've told, if they're not married, I have no problem saying you shouldn't get married. That's not well received. Mm -hmm. well, but the invitations, they, they usually come in just before the, the, the wedding. Uh, I want to catch them before that. <laughs> before you get the invitations printed. <laughs> yeah. End of last year, I saw a couple and I told them, the invitations were already out. I said, don't do it. I'm telling you right now, listen, really? postpone. Oh, the dress, the, you can still wear the same dress. Mm -hmm. You'll you have to cancel the rest of it, but yeah. you're not ready. They didn't listen to me. 
<laughs> what happened? I don't know. I'll probably hear from them this year. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. since they're married now, different story. We'll make it work. But, oh, they were not ready. Mm -hmm. They were not ready. Mm -hmm. We're out of time again. I just yeah. love talking to you because I love to, you know, kind of figure out how this whole human thing works, you know, in the relationships because it's very plain in God's Word. And it is. You just do it His way. Do it His way put Him out of business. That's the truth. Yeah, it would. It would. <laughs> uh, stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Wow. It's always a pleasure when he's here, and I'm be anxious to see him again next month. As I mentioned at the top of the show, I was going through the closet. You know, last uh, weekend when I was home, I started cleaning out the closet, you know, pulling a few things out for Salvation Army, this, that, and the other. You have to do that once in a while. That's what I was doing here at the office. And I found a few of these books, which we have offered in recent months uh, for a specific amount. I'm offering them to you today for any amount, any amount you can give to the ministry. And I promise you, you I really believe you're going to learn things about money in there that you didn't know before from someone who is qualified to write. So call the 800 number on your screen uh, if you want to use credit cards or our address is there if you want to send a check for any amount to keep the ministry on the air. And thank you in advance for anything you can do. I think it's interesting uh, when we talk about marriage with uh, such a professional, someone who has probably heard every kind of marriage story, good, bad, and different, nightmares, wonderful stories, but in this fifth chapter of Ephesians, you know how most of our Bibles are kind of laid out in little sections. And this one, beginning with this 22nd chapter, uh, the heading that the writer has put in, Marriage Like Christ and the Church. That says it all. Marriage is supposed to be an illustration of Christ and the church. The husband representing Christ, loving the church, just loving, loving. And then that wife submitting back to the husband as in Christ. Wonderful, wonderful. And it really does work. Hey, I'm out of time. Join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.